Welcome to Mark Arnold's Finance. Today I want to talk about a company that I own and that is Tattooed Chef. Now let's talk about uh, real quickly the painful part. Um, my portfolio with Tattooed Chef, it is down 56, almost 57%. So I bought uh, $1,100 worth of Tattooed Chef and I've lost $650 of that investment. So it kind of stings. But I will say this, after looking at their earnings today, I'm still holding their stock and am happily doing so. So let me talk about that now. Uh, before I do, I'm very transparent, so I do share stuff like this. So be sure to subscribe to my channel if you want to follow along on my journey. I'm learning, I'm growing, and I feel we can all do that together. So be sure to subscribe. And I provide quality, regular content. Regular is the key word. I'm not going to disappear someday. So. Uh, join me on my journey and I'd appreciate it. And thank you to all those who are subscribed. I appreciate you guys very, very much. All right, Tattooed Chef, the recent earnings. Let's talk about their cash. So their cash is on a decreasing trend, but it's not a red flag for me. So last year, one year ago, they had $185 million in cash. As of this last quarter, they have $57.4 million. So it's decreased pretty uh, drastically. But to me, that makes sense with all the inflation and increased costs across the board. Uh, a small company like this, you know, they're going to be hit hard. Um, they're not going to have those big company connections or ways to kind of the to same tools that those other companies have. So not a red flag at all for me. Uh, let me know if you think it is, though. But I really do think the inflation, the increased costs explains it and, and puts it into perspective where I can understand that. Uh, they did have a negative earnings per share, so they missed estimates. They came in at a negative 0.22 um, cent EPS, and their net loss was 17.6 million. Now, as I just mentioned, the reasoning for this was exactly the increase in costs, the inflation. They're saying it's hitting them hard, and that's due to the negative um, earnings and net loss. Uh, so with that said, of course, their expenses are increasing. Uh, so their cost of goods sold increased 41% to 63.9 million. And they mentioned, you know, with inflation and especially the increased transportation costs, a, a company like this that sells food, they're going to have to do a lot of transportation. So I definitely know that that's hitting them hard, which is why I don't see red flags with these things. It's explainable. It makes sense. Um, now that was some of the negative. Let's look at the positive. Their revenue, they beat estimates. So their revenue came in at $72.1 million, a new high, which is awesome. And as of from last quarter this year, it rose 37%. So that's healthy growth in a small company like this. Anything above 20%, I think is very healthy. And each 10% you go up is just better and better. So they're almost near 40%. Um, they are expanding their SKUs. So at the end of 2021 in December, they had 78 SKUs. Now they have 90 SKUs. So more products to offer to their customers. And they also added 10,000 new points of distribution, which means they're expanding where they're selling their products. So that is phenomenal for me. Um, new products. Let's talk about this. Of course, they're mainly in the freezer section and some in the refrigerated section. Um, but they are now expanding to burritos and pizza, and there's some others. But the most important thing to me is they're getting out of the refrigerator and freezer sections, and they're now going to be selling next quarter um, oat butter bars. So they're getting uh, away from those sections, which is smart because think about it. If you store your food in a refrigerated or f uh, freezer, that takes a lot of energy. So the profits are reduced for a company like Tattooed Chef, where if they get out of that, it's a lot cheaper to store your product in a grocery store. So that is something excellent. And I have no doubt that this isn't the only item that'll be non-freeze or non-refrigerated. I can imagine them doing chips or salsa or who knows what else, but it's very exciting. They're finally getting out of the cold area. Now, they had cash of 57.4 million, something very important to really notice is their low debt. They only have 0.6 million dollars of debt or 600,000. That is amazing. That's a huge green check for me and it makes me happy that a small company like this has low debt. That means they're able to operate on their own business and not having to take out this massive debt in order to expand and grow. And this company is growing quickly for a company its size and so new to the market and being in so many stores now 
to have that low of debt to me is a great sign, so I'm happy about that. Uh, lastly, on the positive, they did buy a new cold storage facility. This will reduce their costs in the future because to store anywhere else where they don't own it, they're gonna charge them pretty high rent or whatever storage fees you wanna call it. So being able to store it at their own facility that they control is excellent. This company is vertically integrated and they're just making more moves to make sure that they are dependable on only themselves and mainly themselves. So very exciting. Uh, so an overview on Tattooed Chef, it's a very tough economy, especially for smart, small cap companies. The inflation, the increased costs across the board, especially with transportation, is hitting these companies very hard because um, the big companies, they have that cash flow to work with. These small companies don't necessarily, and we saw the decrease in their cash. So that's something to me that is explainable. There's no red flags there because I know it's hitting them hard. But on the positive side, the more important side, this company is still growing at very healthy levels. Their SKUs are expanding massively. They're expanding you know, where they sell their products massively. I know that they've bought um, you know, New Mexico food distributors, this new food, uh, cold storage food, food facility. I know they bought something else too, I forgot. But they are increasing their opportunities to control their own, own business and expand into different products, which we just saw, the oat bars, the burritos, the pizzas. Um, so that's what you want to see with a company in this phase, in the beginnings, is the growth. The financials are gonna get messy. They're gonna go up, they're gonna go down, but as long as they're growing their product, what they're you know, known for, that's what's important. That's what they're doing. So that's very exciting to me um, that they're also getting out of that refrigerator, freezer um, aisle because they're gonna make more profits out of that. But it's good to be diverse and they're doing that with having products everywhere and they'll keep expanding that, I feel. So what I see is that this company is one that I'm still gonna be holding I do admit that I bought at the wrong time. And I think a lot of people did because the other channel, Jeremy, Jeremy's financial channel or whatever, you know, I think he was pumping up the stock too much. But if you took a step back, which I should have done and looked at the economy, not just the company, but the economy, you probably would have saw some possible rough waters ahead and maybe would have had me wait out a little bit longer. But with, you know, the increasing inflation and, uh, you know, other factors in the market, I probably would have waited longer, but I was so fixated and focused on the company just itself. I didn't look outside of that. Um, so I bought in at the wrong time, I admit it, but now might be the right time for me to start buying back in again and reducing uh, my costs, my, average, my cost average. And I think that it's a good point for you guys to think about too. Um, and so I do think that uh, this is, something that I will keep adding as the year goes on, possibly into next year in little chunks. I want, to be, I want it to stay a small portion of my portfolio. In fact, it is only, if I look here, it makes up 1.36% uh, of my portfolio. So less than 1.5% of my portfolio, which is awesome because that's really helped you know, with their drastic decrease, my, the 56% loss I'm at. It's not hitting me as hard if it was one of my bigger holdings like Microsoft um, or now Amazon that I just bought into. I made a video, be sure to check it out. I'll put it in the link below. Very good, important video I did on Amazon if you're interested in that stock. Um, but the guidance that they provided was still the same. They still expect positive guidance throughout the rest of the year, which is great because if they, a lot of companies right now are putting uh, forth lower guidance, but Tattoo Chef kept the same guidance as they did last earnings, which is a great sign as well. So not saying this is perfect, but I think it's uh, a big step in the right direction for this company, one that's keeping me in this company because if there's any sign of slow growth, if there's any sign of you know, this company taking out more debt or stuff like that, I probably would start weighing about possibly selling, but right now I still think this company is impressive, what they're doing, how fast they're expanding and growing. Uh, I think they're in a growing business, you know, the, the um, plant-based food business. So I think that it'll remain a very small portion of my portfolio, but I'll start averaging my cost basis down. And hopefully, eventually, once this stock starts getting noticed and really truly having some big uh, growth and positive earnings, positive income, I think you'll see the stock take off pretty healthily. <clears throat> but 
that's what I have to say. And let me know what you think of Tattoo Chef. If you hold it, if you've sold it, because I know it's been, <clears throat> it's gone down pretty drastically, or if you um, think that it's still a good investment or a bad investment and why. I'd like to know because I just put forth my opinions. I'm an investor in this, so I'd like to hear other people's opinions so I can also factor those into my decisions and think about them. Uh, so I'd appreciate it. So you guys have a great day. We'll see you next time on Mark Arnold's Finance.